owe you a better choice and a different vision. Our forthcoming budget is our obligation to you to show you how we would do things differently, how we will cut spending to get the debt down, help create jobs and prosperity, and reform government programs. Yes, we can. If we act soon, and if we act responsibly, people in and near retirement will be protected. Oh, happy day! These budget debates are not just about the programs of government. They're also about the purpose of government. So I'd like to share with you the principles that guide us. They are anchored in the wisdom of the founders, in the spirit of the Declaration of Independence, and in the words of the American Constitution. They have to do with the importance of limited government and with the blessing of self-government. What does it mean? And with the blessing of self-government. Please, Master, give me back a little bit of what you have stolen. The reality of the state is that they'll take whatever they want from you because they have the guns and the jails and the military. And that they will attempt to bribe you to get you to participate and give them moral sanction for their theft by getting you to participate in a system that allows you to choose this, that and the other. Of course, you can only choose your master. You can't choose not to be a slave, which of course is why the whole thing is so patently ridiculous. We believe government's role is both vital and limited to defend the nation from attack and provide for the common defense, to secure our borders, to protect innocent life, to uphold our laws and constitutional rights, to ensure domestic tranquility and equal opportunity, and to provide a safety net, to help provide a safety net for those who cannot provide for themselves. We believe that the government has an important role to create the conditions that promote entrepreneurship, upward mobility, and individual responsibility. We believe, as our founders did, that the pursuit of happiness depends on individual liberty, and individual liberty requires limited government. Mm -hmm. And individual liberty requires limited government. The whole reason we have elected officials is so we don't have to think all the time. You know, for years I was one of these people. We got to return to what the founding fathers thought. We got to get back to the Tenth Amendment. We got to return to the Constitution. And you know, as the years go on, and you see that you you observe this government and how utterly removed it is from the government we were intended to have. After a while, you start wondering. You know, look at all these think tanks sending out direct mail fundraising appeals. We've got to cut wasteful government spending, and nothing ever happens, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. You wonder, maybe I am chasing a unicorn here. Maybe there is no such thing. Maybe if you say, this institution has a monopoly on the power to tax and a monopoly on the power to initiate violence, but it will simply restrain itself to a few, a few itemized tasks. I mean, it seems to me unrealistic. Limited government also means effective government. <laughs> when government takes on too many tasks, it usually doesn't do any of them very well. It's no coincidence that trust in government is at an all-time low, now that the size of government is at an all-time high. Your government cannot protect your property by stealing half of it first. It cannot protect your life by threatening you with endless violent edicts. It cannot protect your money by forcing you to use a currency that it counterfeits at will. It cannot protect your children by sealing them up in 18th century mental prisons for years while selling their futures off to the highest bidder. Statism has its churches, its symbols, its deities, its rewards and punishments. And it relies on the control and abuse of children. The parallels are obvious and endless. To save the world, to free the world, to end war and imprisonment and abuse and torture and indoctrination and enslavement and the taxes and debts that enable all such evils, we need to stop teaching our children the language of the state. If we raise our children without aggression, without raising our voices, without raising our hands, without bullying, without control, without punishment and manipulation, with gentleness and firmness and love. They will never fear authority. They will never submit to a brutal hierarchy. 
and they will never accept the moral authority of those who call themselves the state. It's impossible for any one human mind to amass all the knowledge that would be necessary if you wanted to centrally plan society. Everybody's got his own localized knowledge. You wouldn't know where to begin. It would be impossible to be the height of hubris to think you could substitute your judgments for the judgments of hundreds of millions or billions of people who actually have the relevant knowledge necessary.